Today we're going to be covering the top 10 most valuable mini Minozo baseball cards. And I find it fascinating because Minozo baseball cards range all the way from Canada down to Venezuela or Cuba. Like a lot of different countries produce cards for him, as well as it being across numerous decades. He has cards all the way from the 40s through 70s and modern cards that were printed in the 2000s. So you're going to see a wide variety in this list. Real quick though, before we talk about this and go to number 10, I want to briefly tell you who Mini Minozo was. Kind of like in that pioneer category with Jackie Robinson. Both played in some of the different Latin leagues and also the Negro leagues, but also had a very great career here in the MLB. When I was originally researching him a year or two years ago, I had no idea who this was, and I was shocked that he didn't make the Baseball Hall of Fame. And of course, back in 2021, officially was a Baseball Hall of Famer, but really looking into his history kind of shocked me how long it did take him to go in. Uh, in his MLB career, he batted over 308 times, and he was an all-star quite a lot as well, and was really, really good with the Chicago White Sox. There's a few other interesting trivia things with Minozo, but we're going to talk about this after the card number 10, which is the 1967 Venezuela or retired series. Now, these were bootleg Venezuela tops cards. I'm not going to go into the whole history of Venezuela cards. I'm going to do it in another video, uh, but these weren't officially licensed by tops. However, they still can get slabbed. They are technically Venezuela cards. It's, it's just a complicated history. So just keep it out there. Anyways, uh, at this time period, Minoza was playing over in the Mexican League. He was officially done with Major League Baseball, so he was able to be featured in the set. But what I will say it's kind of interesting is back in, I believe it's 1976 and 1980, Minoza had a publicity stunt where he actually got at-bats in a game. So he's one of the few people, and he might actually be the only person in that set that was quote-unquote retired, but continued to play baseball years later. And we're going to do our only modern card in here. This is a 2001 real one, Red Ink Auto from Heritage back in 2001. What's interesting about this is 2001 was the first year of Heritage. Today as a collector, kind of expect it every single year. They're either going to have it at your LCS or they're going to have it on the shelves uh, retail wise. And they honor different legacy years of tops. Every single year, they increment the year of Heritage. Uh, but they started with 1952 back in 01. So, of course, Minozo has his famous Tops card, which, by the way, is on this list. He has a few different versions of it. The Red Ink Auto, which we're talking about, is about $150. You can find the non-Red Ink, which is a blue or black ink, and that's about $180 to $100 is a rough estimate. Also, in this release, he has a few other really cool cards I wanted to highlight. They didn't make this list. First, he has a Clubhouse Collection Relic. His first relic cards were in 2001, so technically that is there. There's also a really hard edition to find, which I could find no sales data of, uh, but it's a relic autograph from Clubhouse number to 25. So instead of putting that in my honorable mentions later on in the video, decided to put that here. Up in the number eight spot, I really think this card should be way higher in the list. However, it's an extremely scarce card, less than 10 examples out there to my knowledge, and there's just not enough sales data on it. And that is the 1946-47 Carmelo Di Porvito. So this isn't this first official issue on cardboard, but this is a much harder set to find uh, than the 45-46, which will be talked about a little bit later. The one sale was back in 2017 for $100, but a lot of the different Latin American League cards have really skyrocketed in the last few years. So I'd expect this to be about an upper three to low four digit card as of the moment, but who knows with what an auction would bring. So we have 1952 star decals. And just as a heads up, we're going to be talking about a lot of 1952 cards. There's a ton of them produced for Minozo. Uh, these star decal cards, I usually find them raw listed at shows or on online marketplaces between like the 100 to $150 range for like lower ended examples to 250 plus for something that looks a lot nicer. Again, range really determines the price on this card, like all the others. There wasn't too many sales data on graded examples, so I decided to look at the raw side of things. There's two different types of this card. There's one by himself, and there's one where he shares it with another player. I think as like a collector, I'd rather have the type one, which is by himself, though. And before we go into the honorable mentions, I have to do number six, which is the 1959 Cons. Now, this was a local uh, food issue release. They're really tough to find. I've only seen them personally in Ohio card shows. And there was one sale that I was able to locate. There was a PSE 6 
which sold for $300 and within the holder, the card was really messed up. So I'd assume if the card was good in the PSA slab, it might've gone for more. Plus you're also looking at a six. There are higher graded examples out there, but just with such limited sales data, it's, it's actually a pretty low populated card. Taking a look at it right now, there's only 12 total that are graded through PSA. So they don't come up to auction often. Assume a higher one though would be into the thousand dollar point. So we're going to do three honorable mentions. Two of them I really couldn't find sales data for is a 1952-53 uh, Victoria. These were, I believe, to my knowledge, a Cuban release that honored Cuban players. But there's only been one graded with PSA and tried finding any more seals online. No luck with that one. Next, we have the 1950 Higgs Dairy. These were, a again, a regional card. Unlike the cons, which were based in Ohio, these were based out of California. At the time, Minoza was playing for the Triple A team, the San Diego Padres. Now we know them as Major League Baseball team, but back then they were minor leagues. But these cards had teams all the way ranging from Sacramento or San Diego all the way up through like Portland or Seattle. So kind of a cool release. I never knew about them before researching the top Minoza cards. And now I want to get one within my PC. And the last honorable mention is a 1959 Venezuela. This is the first year of Venezuela cards that Topps created. So I decided that needed to at least be brought into the honorable mentions. All right, we are now into our top five. At the number five spot, we have the 1954 Red Heart cards. Now these were originally through Red Heart dog food. People could mail in different coupons to get a full set. I'm talking to other collectors, they sent out these sets all the way through the 60s and early 70s. So they're not too hard to find. What I found kind of interesting about this card though, is that this was the first mention of Mini Minozo before his card said Orestis Minozo. So the manufacturers ended up changing them over to Mini in 1954 from that date forward. The card is pretty expensive too. A nine cost you over $1,200 whereas an eight will be around 400. In the number four spot, we have the 1952 Burke Ross. They weren't a manufacturer like Bowman or Topps. They did have a few different years. And, and within these releases, you could find more than just baseball players. There is also boxers, golfers. And it's a really fun set to see. Now six is gonna cost you around $300. However, if you go to the eight grade, it's gonna be around 2,500. Before we get into the top three, I wanted to show you guys the article that wrote on Mini Minozo baseball cards, documented 30 different cards with some descriptions. So make sure to check that out because we couldn't cover all of them within one specific video. Speaking of Bowman and Tops, those are our next two cards on the list. We're going to start with Bowman. 1952 Bowman A6 will run you $500 and 8 is 3000 with the 1952 Tops, one of the most iconic sets of all time. This card has gone up quite a bit over the last year or so. I've been watching them quite a few times at card shows and I've had one or two copies in my possession. Now the 1952 in a six goes for $1,500. The moment in an eight is over 5,000. Number one should be no surprise if you're familiar with his cards. And that is going to be the 1945-46 Carmelo Di Porvito. Now I've talked about the 46-47 a little bit earlier in the list time to tell you about these cards they were distributed in cuba a lot of them were pasted into albums the pictures used were from the cuban winter leagues where you had a, a bunch of different players whether they're negro leaguers or latin american players that played in a lot of different types of pickup games these cards are really cool i own two in my own collection i have the brown and the dandridge which are both hall of famers i still don't have the Minozo, and it's a card that i'm chasing for now, price-wise on the Minozo, a one recently sold for $1,500, which was definitely a hefty chunk of change. And I know that is something that I will be chasing within the next year or two uh, to finish my Hall of Fame run. Still need Minozo and also I need to grab a Dehigo, but that will be for another day. And if you guys want to learn more about some really cool, unique cards you might know not know about, check out this video right here talking about Cap Anson 1800s cards because I learned a lot when I was researching.